Welcome to Commander Smiths. We are the Commander Smiths. I'm Adam Smith. And I'm Lowry Smith. Don't worry. We're cousins. This is episode 162. Thank God you <laughs> checked that. <laughs> yeah, you're like, shit. <laughs> uh, what do we have in store today? We have kind of a cool little special episode. We actually stumbled upon this idea while a doing weeks Unsnipped. Ago. Yeah. <laughs> we were like, oh. Hey, this is what we're going to do next week. And then what happened last so, week? So at least two of you know what's coming <laughs> this episode. Yeah, that is the funny thing. Is, is, <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm going to put it on YouTube so I can see how many people are actually watching this. And then there's two. <laughs> two. I think it was Guy. Two. One of them was Guy. And me- just two. <laughs> um, so we're going to talk about card choices and how to build a deck for new players yeah and it it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be a new player to enjoy this but like lowry and i built a deck uh i have a deck always on me that is just in case i play with somebody that's new uh we built a deck to make it easy for a player that is new to the game to play but Mm -hmm. this also Mm -hmm. can fit with if you're newer to commander it doesn't mean like a noob like you don't know how things work this is just making it some tips it's a, just the tips right just the yeah, tips of just the tips kind of a blooper ouch ouch get off my hair <laughs> thank you for reminding me that i gotta get to that button <laughs> do you there. have the button ready uh, come on i do but the pages i gotta go back i kind of know okay, where my, okay. my stuff is i actually what i should do is write page seven button three so that i know where it is oh no <laughs> oh not right no. away what is going on with my video? Oh, you know, okay, so YouTube's You're just pretty keep difficult. Going again, but I'm not even flipping here. <laughs> what is going on? The uh, there are so many technical complications that happen there. No, this is perfect. I hope you fall on your head now. This <laughs> is stupid. I it, there is nothing wrong with it. Like, I don't even know why it flipped me. No, like, no, this is. This is what fucking happened to me last week. I was I was going to be guest appearing emergency wise on CMD Tower and oh, 20 minutes in. No, you. it's not a good for me because oh, my computer oh, oh. totally shit out on me <laughs> after 20 minutes. It was going perfect. And then it just shut down. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> that's more. That's how I felt. I, I fell into a deep depression for <laughs> A couple hours. I was super disappointed. That it was it was weird. I got that cast sucks. blocked by you my own computer. <laughs> it was I did not like it. That sucks. It's very bothersome. Uh, so I apologize right now and multiple times on Discord. But so yeah, technology sucks. And they didn't respond. Right? They're like, fuck that guy. No, I'm just kidding. Fuck, yeah, they're like, no, no worries. We'll get you on again sometime in the next five years. <laughs> Line through your name from now on. <laughs> Fair enough. What the hell is going on? Why is my video keep mm. flipping? This is ridiculous. Yeah, it didn't happen. We we talked for an hour before this trying to figure out how to do this properly. And this did not happen. And so, ridiculous. so new players, you're wanting to have them invited in and make it fairly easy. And you need to be able to dis, uh, you know describe what you're doing within the deck without like playing for them or making sure that your cards aren't overly complicated. And we want to just go over some of those uh, ideas and more specific cards and themes and kind of go through our blueprint while we're doing this. Uh, And so hopefully it's helpful because (laughs) if you want to never built this deck, (laughs) visually while Lowry is describing that and me messing with my camera, you can check out YouTube because that whole time my camera was black and then I'm messing with it. And yeah. Oh, the do you want me to stop YouTube. because of YouTube or should we just say, I mean, no, it's more not, not on that part. Maybe if we're in the deep part of the episode. So this is a, this is a little, uh, on air production. Don't keep going there because that's going to be hard for me to edit stuff in. Although I guess it might be funny with me just going black, but I wasn't listening to anything you were saying there. I'm just trying to fucking fucking. Yeah, I was just camera. stalling. So 
Uh, I feel like if we're talking about a card, you could just throw that picture up over yeah, you. Over me. For, uh, yeah, that's my picture from now on. <laughs> Burn. There's, there's my hand right over the camera. Yeah. What uh, a beautiful hand. That's so, yeah. so dumb. So uh, it, speaking of all this, of the technical errors, it happened during proxy time this week. Son of a... <laughs> but the funny God. thing is, I didn't realize it. <laughs> so oh. I'm I'm editing and I'm looking over on because it's on two screens. So I have it recording on the other one. And I'm just doing my thing. And then it just it caught my eye and I looked over and I'm like, I'm fucking upside down. What the hell? <laughs> so it was only like three minutes, but it's kind of funny because I'm in the corner just doing my thing, editing the picture, you know, making this new, you know, the bloodstained Meyer thing, and I'm mm-hmm. upside down. <laughs> just uh i I don't know i and the thing is is using this camera with my phone it's a good camera so it's like i don't want to like switch off of it you know so it's like i don't know i might have to figure out a different connection for my phone cool story hand so oh yeah so Mm -hmm. like larry said just the tips uh we have the the stump the smith savant we got two of those today two two hopefully this week i can use the um the wrong, 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 wrong. I didn't get to use that except for showing you the example uh, last. It was week. stuck in my head all week, though, and so. And then we are doing one spec. We're gonna kind of jump back a little bit because no, forward. Well, we continually go back. Well, yeah, I guess we're always going back. We're never going yeah. forward. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. Uh, but Caldime just came out not that long ago. And we've already moved on to the times where I were mastered. And then we got spoilers today of two cards. Strixhaven. Strixhaven. Is... Cards are already starting to go for Caldime. I think you still have a lot of time with this, but we have kind of some specs that we think you can go after. I think next week we're going to hit Time Spire Remastered because those cards are already going up. Um, what is it? Sliver Legion already jumped 20. Yeah, I don't like, care. Like, damn it. <laughs> I'd only want that for the collection because I'm not going to build a sliver deck like I've said, but still I was like going to buy it at 30 and now it's Mm -hmm. a $50 Mm -hmm. card. So uh, we'll probably hit that one up next week. So this week we are doing Caldime going through that as well. Um, What are you drinking? Oh, I actually, hang on. Oh, I was almost like taking Not that one. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have done that. He's drinking whiskey and you just kind of like... Well, because good, good, I want to, I'm having a, it's a screwball peanut butter whiskey as a picture of like a, that seems interesting. A little lamb on the, if you look at YouTube's, you can see that. I'm not sure if that means anything though. It says to the, is it like a peanut butter <laughs> lamb sandwich, <laughs> lamb, lamb sandwich to the misfits, black sheep and screwballs. Ah, Which one are you? You're none of those. I'm a screwball. I'm a misfit. Maybe. I don't eat potatoes. Maybe you're not a misfit. I don't eat potatoes. <laughs> you're not. I was happy. I think it was T Coats got on my yeah. on my back this week. <laughs> He's like, that's all right. You can that. have at least one of our patrons agree with you yeah. that they don't like potatoes, but the rest of them are on my side. Yeah. And so I was just like, I'm sorry. I can't help my taste buds. And you get the whole, well, it's more for me that Devin was sitting. I was like, fine. I don't <laughs> care. Yeah, it's more for you. All right. So I'm going to taste this peanut butter whiskey. Ooh. Ooh. That's pretty good. Interesting. It's it's sweeter than normal, but I put like oh, honey whiskeys are going to be yeah. to the top. This might be second because I've had that, you know, I had the apple and then that berry kind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Apple's the bottom. The berry is probably right below this. Yeah, it's a little bit sweeter than I would like, but it's it's not bad. You got a little peanut butter taste. What are you drinking there, Lyle? Um, It's called a... Ninja Smoke Bomb. Ooh. It's uh, Smoked Hells from wild mind yeah ales which i i really like this company this is really light on flavor um it's a big I like it. there. yeah it's you know no it's just small hands don't worry about it it's, <laughs> it's, uh, like it's the, cool the, the Ninja. burger king commercial where the really small hand guy and he's holding the big whopper 
Yeah. Or we can lose some more listeners and we can do a Donald Trump reference. But uh, oh, oh, we already <laughs> lost one. Stop. <laughs> we miss you. Come back. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> uh all right so uh one thing i i did do you have any stories for this week i um no i'm good i have three things oh. one and this is is going nice with this gout is back for me hmm. so that's no good that's my first I'm sorry gout flare-up since i thought you uh, just, aren't doctor. you taking meds yeah so i go back to that him was on like Friday. two weeks ago no i've been taking it for a month now so okay. I go to him on Friday and it's kind of weird. So the last two have done like a weird, like it flares up. It start, I could start to feel it like two days in advance and then it flares up and I'm like, Oh, it isn't terrible. It just hurts a little bit, a little uncomfortable mm-hmm. goes away for a day and then gets really bad. The next, like worse than the uh, first time the next that's day. Not good. So that's yeah. where I'm at today. Um, started building the climbing wall. I got to show you a picture of that. I'll shoot you a text. So Nick and my dad came over yesterday and started putting up the climbing wall. That'll be awesome. Yeah. So that's pretty sweet. And then I forgot to talk about the eBay scammer <laughs> last week. Remember the scammer? Yeah. I'm going to see right. if this is going to work at all. So I had this. <clears throat> how do I describe this? So I, I sent out Reaper King, which if you go back about a month and a half ago, Larry was like, that's a really who's buying that card at that price. Well, I sent that out, and that was right before eBay started doing the tracking on orders of $20 or less. Now, just a little side note to people, if you buy from me right now, because we're promoting the show, you get a kill him token that we got produced that's actually Mm -hmm. like our business card, and you also get a free proxy of whatever proxy I did that week. I kind of include that in with your package. That This is key to this whole situation here. So I sent that out. And it did not have tracking guy claims after about a week and a half, didn't get the card. I was like, give it another week. He didn't get it. So I was like, all right, I'll send another one out. Now eBay starts that tracking thing. So I had tracking on it. Uh, I tell him to take down his case because on eBay, if you don't get a card, you go, uh, Hey, I haven't gotten it yet. I'm claiming this, whatever. If it doesn't get resolved within X amount of days, they, they determine who gets the money or who gets a refund or whatever. So I said, can you take that down? Because you can see your card's about to get there today. And he's like, yeah, I can. But here's the thing. I just found my Reaper King in my collection. And I'm just going to send this one back once it comes. And I was like, I didn't even respond because I was just pissed. Because I'm like, now I've sent out two to you. I've sent out fucking two. So he two. doesn't even, he waits a week to even send it back. He gets it and waits a week. And then he sends it back. I get it and I open it up and I'm like, what the fuck? It has the token that we or the our business card we give, just fine. Mm-hmm. I was like, he could have kept it, whatever. It's in the same packaging that I had. Or no, it's in different packaging. It's not even in the same stuff. So he like took it out and opened it. He gave back the proxy, but it's the proxy from the first shipment I sent and not the, the one that I just sent because I sent it and I checked the dates and I was like, I sent him this card the day after I did yeah. so-and-so proxy time, and I got back the proxy of that. The second time, I sent out a proxy that I did four weeks later, and he didn't send that one back. So I called him out on it, and I was just like, I mean, I tried to explain. He's like, no, you're confused. that You didn't send me two. I was like, yeah, I, I did. And I sent you one with tracking and you sent me the one. And the only reason I know this, and I like explained it all. And he's like, whatever, dude, that's not what I did. And I was like, okay, if you're saying that's not what you did, I'll give you the money. But I was just a fuck. Fucking people. Yeah. I, I mean, there isn't much you can do about it, but it's a good thing that they have tracking going now. Yeah. And that's I, te- I called you and I was like, I don't know what to do here. It's like, it's really my word against his word. I mean, I have like, if they really wanted to investigate a $10 fucking car, that's why I was like, won't. I didn't care. But I was yeah. like, I just didn't want him to start scamming other people. And that's kind of my thing. Cause it was like $10, whatever you, you can have. Yeah. You just don't want it. You know, if somebody's scamming you for that, it's going to be a repeat offender essentially. But I think that, and that's what we had the discussion about is eBay doing this 
tracking on twenty dollars and under, and actually it's cheaper. The the shipping's fifty one cents instead of a stamp being fifty five. So you yeah. actually get a discount. So most everybody is shipping that way. So I'm hoping this eliminates that guy from that. But I so just you know when you know when you bust somebody that's cheating or lying or stealing in a way, it's like I just. Uh, I just wanted him to know that I knew. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that so is. That's how I ended it. I was like, a good thing. and he may even now listen to the show because he kept at least a business <laughs> card and a proxy because he got him. I know he did. Fuck oh you, boy. Bastard. <laughs> if you're listening, I know <laughs> you're on my naughty list. <laughs> you're on my shit list. Oh, <laughs> uh, all right. I think. That's 15 minutes in. I think we're good. So you have no have you have no, no uh, stuff there this week? No. Nope. Nope. Wrong, well, I know wrong, one thing wrong, that you... Wrong. <laughs> you had a couple new things this week, but it's uh, magic related. So I'll get into it with the tags here. So let's do the tags quick. Uh, you guys can become a supporter of the show by going to Patreon. Patreon. Donate a dollar or more. Gets you on the Discord. Battle Box League. Uh, you also get our unsnip videos, which are only for the Discord people. And what are you doing with? <laughs> are you jerking off your corner of your room? You can see Lowry's. It sounds antics. weird when you say it like <laughs> yeah. that. Is that I'm not jerking doing? off the corner or in the corner? I'm just. <laughs> I had. That's looked- where my roll of foils. Where'd that go? Oh yeah, it isn't there. <laughs> It has been replaced with a quip head. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so that gets you in the Discord, all that fun stuff. You get to have fun chats and hear childish humor or gifs or whatever the hell you want on there. $5 or more gets you proxy of the week. Also gets you eligible for prizes when we break records and all that fun stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. We do have a little bit of... If you're a hundred dollars or more lifetime, you get to choose from any of the proxies that ever have been done. Good so point. that's kind of a thing that I always forget to mention on there. But the free way to support the show is you can check out YouTube, subscribe there. We are doing the push to 1K. <laughs> like because there's visuals now, I like that you are adding into this. Uh, this I'm gonna keep well, my do, eyes do down so I'm so not watching. Good. I'm just trying to <laughs> miming it. Mime the uh, subscribe thing. Uh, so you can also check out this episode on YouTube with visuals of Lowry doing his thing. Also, we did start doing card previews last week, so you can see that in our sweet moving background, which is awesome. Uh, also, proxy time is on there. And curated MTG gets a lot of views on there, which is Larry's thing. He's been doing twice a week. Has been getting a ton of views. You've been getting a lot of a uh, lot of a lot of movement on that. Like, you know, uh, and those are weekly stuff. That's weekly. So we have the podcast, but we have these weekly episodes that pop up on YouTube as well. Uh, just the tip videos. Uh, we also will have. We just did our league championship game. At some point, that'll be posted on there. That was good. I thought you wanted to say something. It was a joke. No, fuck no. <laughs> was, it was a was very you? interesting game. I will say that. Lowry had some uh, stabbings of backs that. Uh, I, there was no stabbing of back. <laughs> that implies per, like. You, you didn't do it on purpose. on purpose. Yeah, but he accidentally. Stabs. Accidentally killed my partner. Partner. <laughs> It was, I'm going to try to make that one a short so everybody can see that as much as possible. Sweet. Uh, Look forward to it. You can also follow us on Twitter. Uh, that's where Larry actually discusses a little bit more in depth with the curated MTG. Actually, the video, it talks really in depth with it. But uh, on Twitter, that's where he gets in conversations with people on there as well. Uh, then you can also see Proxy of the Week cards on there, not sharing with Adam. Mail day, card sphere, card kingdom, all that fun stuff that Lowry does on there. Uh, direct message us on there, or you can direct message us by the email, commandersmith at gmail. All right, that's everything. I think that's everything. Weekly. Yep. Now, oh, are we gonna? Are we close to like breaking a month record? We are very close, actually. If uh, the numbers go how they've been going and we maybe get a little bump we'll beat it but 
I think it's going right. to be really like at, at the right now, it looks like we're going to get right at the same number again. We're going to be within that hundred. That's acceptable. I'm just, so, I'm just saying the, if you want to go to your wife or girlfriend's phone and just play the podcast, you know, I'm silent. I'm maybe silent. even when you're, you're gone for the day, you just play the podcast for your, yeah. your pet. That doesn't do anything for us. That just gets it so you guys yeah. get prizes. And when you so come if you home, do stuff if your for parrot us, starts cussing at you, that's not our fault. Yeah. Garook's dong. Garook's <laughs> dong. I just found our opener. <laughs> <laughs> like your, your, your parrot impression. <laughs> uh, all right. That was good. Who the fuck has a parrot these days? Garook's <laughs> dong. Now I gotta find it. Now I gotta, I'm, 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 I'm stuck. All right, it's time for everyone's favorite game show, Stump the Smith Savant. All right, bring that down. Oops, I didn't. I didn't smoothly transition that like I normally do. All right, if you guys don't know how this game works, I am going to read the flavor text of a card. Lowry is going to take what that flavor text is. He's going to try to figure out what card I am talking about. He can only ask yes or, yes or no questions. Uh, if he gets a no, he will hear this. Wrong, 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 wrong. If he gets a yes, he'll hear this. Hello, boobies. Uh, every wrong guess is minus 10 points. Every clue I give is minus five points. He starts with 100. I never say what he ends up with, so it doesn't really matter. Whose line is it anyways? Uh, so that's how this all works. So it's just for fun. You guys can play along and taunt to Lowry and see if you can actually beat him. See if him. you can beat me. Uh, he's actually been kicking some ass lately. So I don't mm -hmm. think there's many people that over the last couple of weeks have said that they beat you. So, all right. <clears throat> you ready for the first one? Let's do it. Gaia forged her soldiers into self-wielding weapons that struck down all impurities. Gaia forged her soldiers into self wielding weapons that struck down all impurities. Hmm. All right. So that puts it, is this card originally printed before time spiral? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Oh, sorry. Hello movies. <clears throat> it also makes voice. sense. Um, Okay. So this also talking about Gaia makes me feel like, is this a green card? You made a, you made a, is this a multicolored card? Hello boobies. All right. So this is a green, but has multicolored. It's pre time spiral. Um, I mean, this is, you know, it's not Ravnica, it's not Mirrodin, it's it's the Weatherlight Saga, <clears throat> roughly. Gaia forged her soldiers into self-wielding weapons that struck down all impurities. So the weird thing is, I want to say it's like an elf, or elf-themed, or elf in the art, because that is a little bit of what like an elf would be is just like a weapon of the forest. But I think that's not going to be accurate with that time frame of being made. I'll take a clue. Okay. <clears throat> the picture, the card features a mutant like thing with long nails and long saber tooth like teeth. Oh, mutant. It's very deformed. You can't tell what it is. So your elf thing is a little like, <laughs> and it's, it's on every single printing of this. This is the same art. It is not any different. <clears throat> okay. So long claws, long saber tooth. Long nails, like I would say. Teeth. Not claws, but nails. Well, I, those are the same things, I guess. Hmm. Mm. If you get like those those long nails, they get really thin and brittle, and like it's more 
I don't know, claws I'll, are. I'll say they. Like it looks rawr. more like a uh, Karurk's thumb type. You know how his nail gets? It's like broken. Little, and, hmm. You know what I'm talking I don't about? Remember that? No, I don't remember that at all from that. Karurk's I mean, it's thumb, like you know? cracked. It's cracked, but it's not yeah. like a long thumb. No, th- not the thumb isn't it's, long. The nails all long. I don't think so. That's just a normal nail. Let them be. <laughs> I, th- you know, it's posted right here. As I'm talking about Kirk's thumb, it's now posted between us. So <laughs> I'm going to go um, check to make sure I was right. <laughs> the I thought that the that would actually help with the, uh, but it's not helping you much. No, no. Yeah, okay, Kirk's so his thumb is is he has a long nasty nail. No. <laughs> No. Um, do you want another clue, or do you want to make a guess? You haven't done any guesses on this. I haven't round. done any guessing. I don't think this is a creature. I want to say this is a spell or an enchantment. It's not an artifact. They didn't have colored artifacts by that point. Not a planeswalker. Is is this a creature? Wrong, 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 yeah. wrong. So this is... And is this an enchantment? Hello, boobies. All right. Gaia forged her soldiers into self-wielding weapons that struck down all impurities. It is a green a card at least, multicolored, enchantment, Pre time spiral. Yeah. So Gaia would be not black, probably not red, but the mutation part makes me feel like it's black. And so is that, and, and the mutation part also makes me feel like it's Don't get hung up on the mutation. You just can't tell what the hell it is. It just looks like a. thing with claws. Uh, I'll take another clue. Okay. I'll take another clue. ETB may destroy. Oh, aura shards? Ah! Yay! Hello, boobies. (laughs) Good job. Now, can you picture his claws and his fangs and all that fun stuff? Yeah. All right. That's a good Uh, one. I like that one. Next one. All right. I'm going to have trouble with the, the name, but it might help you a little bit. But it's Quizel, Q U Y Z L, was told by his mentor to make more time for his studies. Quizel was Frantic told search. by his mentor to quote unquote make more time end quote there not quote unquote is, quote, is it make is more it frantic time. search what frantic search wrong wrong okay. wrong wrong. Uh, Make more time for his studies. Is this an extra turn card? Hello, boobies. All right. <clears throat> Quizzle. Quizzle. Make more time for his studies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Quizzle, it, it's a quote from Quizzle. Quizzle said, make more time for you. No. No. What, no, 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 no. But like, what's the quote again? Quizzle was told by his mentor to make more time for his studies. So that's something that I would say like to Fury would say to someone. Because he's a time. Dude. Um... So this it makes me feel like it's dealing with students and professors, which is heavily in the Urza's block. Is this from Urza's block? There isn't an extra turn there. Um, wrong, wrong, yeah. wrong, okay. wrong. <clears throat> Quizzle. Quizzle. I don't recognize that name at all. I don't know where to place it. Want a clue? Mm, I mean, is this card blue? Hello, boobies. It's not like fucking seed time or something. Um, 
and and so it would be a is this a sorcery okay but just naming the obvious just making sure oh what <laughs> came from you <laughs> I, gotta, I ate a dinosaur today I'm just <laughs> mad um so it's blue sorcery extra turn card make more time for your studies or some okay so let's shorten this down is this printed more recently like from time spiral forward wrong wrong that's an older card again <clears throat> they weren't i mean like temporal manipulation Wrong, 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 wrong. You want a clue? Yeah, I'll <laughs> get a lot of clue. Uh, so the card features, the picture features one human, four hands, and two faces on this one human. One person, two heads, time warp. Wrong, wrong, what? wrong, wrong. <clears throat> is this legal in Commander? <laughs> Hello, boobies. Okay, so it is. It is legal in Commander. Um, I'll give you a free hint. This recently has spiked. I mean, this isn't part of the hint. I mean, it's this recently has spiked, but especially the foil versions of this. The other clue that I was going to have, I have, this will help with I'll, it. I'll take you, the other clue. I'll take okay. the other clue. Uh, with your turns, do you like taking a chance to get them? That doesn't help. You have to take a chance to get this extra turn. There, that's worded a little better. You motherfucker. Since Is you this know a blue that and a red card. <laughs> Hello, okay. That's what you're getting stuck up on. I was like, damn, he's he's freaking he thinks okay. it's only blue. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh so is this from Guild Pack? Hello, boobies. Yeah. All right. It's colorless, red and a blue. Mm -hmm. You need to flip Hello, a coin. Boobies. To, Hello, boobies. If you win, you draw a card. Hello, boobies. Or not draw a card. You are wrong. <laughs> yeah, <draw. laughs> Hello, wrong, boobies. Wrong, wrong. Hello, boobies. <laughs> Um, stitch in time. Ah, Hello, boobies. Ah, I was, yeah, I was, I was definitely stuck on the mono blue part. I forgot yeah, I all about. I was like, ah, oh, dang it! How do I get them out of that? And I was like, maybe. So you get the two heads, one person, two yeah, heads. I, I see it now. Yeah, it's like all whatever. All over. The, I feel like that temporal uh, or time warp, not the new one. You know, the old version of like multiple hands. You know that one. Because the new one, the one that I gave oh. you, was was like the wave going over the bubble. Person, the sweetest but, art ever. I love that art. It is. It is one of my favorite. Art. All right. So we are, what are we doing? It's just the tips. Just the tips. Just the, there just we go. the tips. Perhaps or, a game called Just the Tip. Just for a second. Just to see how it feels. Or I'm John Shaw on my hair. All right. Another Just the Tips episode. So in this... We were talking about the blueprint for new players building decks. Doesn't necessarily mean that you may not be a new player, but I don't know if you necessarily build decks for new players ever, but I like to at least have one around so that if I'm we have somebody that comes in that doesn't play that much, and I've had to use it a couple times. Yes. Uh, actually I actually have two of them, I guess, because Edgar, I would consider that as well, and we'll get into that later, but I have two decks that, fit into that kind of category where it's pretty self-explanatory. It makes it easy for players to learn and not get frustrated. Uh, so we're going to kind of do is go through that, but then maybe you as a listener are a newer player. And this is just kind of a way maybe to build your deck so that it's easier for you to not get lost or frustrated or too complicated mm -hmm. and all that. So we're going to kind of give you some tips. I, on I think it also applies to 
the deck that you play against a new player. Now it can be a, a bit more advanced than what we're talking about, mm. but I wouldn't go like all on confusing combo. You know, I wouldn't right. go like doomsday. That's a good point into, you know, like, so I, you know, it's still like apply these principles, but don't, don't make it. Oh, like not fun for you either. So, yeah. So what we're going to do, we're basically going to start off, give you kind of some, some tips, just some common keys is what we were calling it. The first keys. <laughs> and then yeah. we're going to hit the category. So, you know, we have your, your ramp, your land, your draw, your removal, protection, recursion, game enders, our day of dragons, and maybe some themes with some commanders and stuff. So kind of how you build the deck in the first place. When we talked about the blueprint episode, Mm -hmm. last summer fallish i think it was summer when we talked about the blueprint of building deck this is similar you're taking down these similar things but kind of making them more fit for a newer player to make it easier for that player yeah. um yeah. so why don't we start off just from the top and then we'll we'll finish up with secondary keys right is that what we wanted to finish we finished with the other keys second keys <laughs> Yeah, like that's afterwards, though, yeah, right? At the end. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, why do you start us off? What What is some of the keys that are a key that you would think that players well, need? Should to we have? just go back and forth on what? Because we we did have maybe different criteria on this point, but um, and so I think we should. So one thing that I was looking for was making sure, like, when you're building your deck, just make sure you have enough lands and enough draw in there. If you're if you're building a deck that's like, <clears throat> think about it a little bit like what the precons do. Like they all come with fucking forty two, and you just get flooded more than you'd like, and you play at like thirty six. I would say maybe not do forty two, but like forty. Well, you know, I like thirty eight. I'd go forty, forty two. Just be making sure. Flood is not as bad as screw. Yeah. In but my mind. The other thing is, is I would say in the other part of that is probably with newer players, what they tend to do is not put enough land, you know, cause they're like, also true. I want to have my creatures and I want to have my things that are going on. So if that person is building the deck themselves, make sure you don't skip on the land and the same thing that you're saying. Mm -hmm. Make sure you have enough for sure. At least hit that 36 to 40 range of land maybe go on the higher side like you yep. said because you're not you're not necessarily and we're going to get into this in a little bit here but you're not tutoring as much uh, in this stuff you're you probably don't have a lot of ramp cards to go find you more land so you probably and i actually we didn't talk about this beforehand but i don't have fetches in this because of the tutor uh, part of that um yeah i even, agree i did not make any notation of I didn't that either but yeah. but that thinking would... about it i'm like you don't want that, and that's one of the, the the things that we where does that fit in the tutors? Uh, oh yeah, that's in this part. One of the keys. I I, that's that. in this part. Yeah. So, not a lot of tutors. Uh, you, you don't want a new player. Little to none. Yeah, because it one if if it's them building the deck, they'll have a better understanding of their deck. But you don't always know what what you need at that point. You don't mm -hmm. know what the answer is or whatever. If you're building a deck and somebody else is using it, it's a new player. They're not going to know what to go get. I remember every every time, every what time it's get? going. To be, what am I supposed to get? Supposed Even to get? when it's a new, like a, a, a an older player, and they're playing with somebody else's deck, they're like, "Okay, I'm going to tutor. What do you want? What should I be what going to tutor? Yeah. It doesn't matter your skill level if you don't know the deck. Yeah, a tutor is going to be really tough to use. So, so that yeah. is one thing with this is try not to put many if any tutors we already don't do that but really don't <laughs> do that with this but that's even that's that's cutting out a card like that's probably lowry's number one and my number two lands to have in your deck besides your basic lands is fetches, fetches and i that's my number you know i do the og duels you do the fetches but they're one and two and we're yep. saying to cut those out because that just it just it, it also it adds length to that game because they really mm -hmm. don't know what they're getting. You know, if you keep adding all these tutors and you're like, okay. <laughs> and shuffling can be tough for a new player with these deck sizes. Mm. And you just say, thank you for the 
you know, the compliment, but <laughs> it's a dick joke. These deck right. sizes, I got you. Wait, oh, <clears throat> shit. <laughs> I wasn't done the drum. Dr- if I had the drum drokes, drokes, <laughs> you know what I need to do is organize these as like, this is the jokes page. Cause then I could have done. Yeah. All I have here is, oh. and that wouldn't have worked. <laughs> oh, you're, oh, your you're, you have a small is, penis. <laughs> <laughs> your duck size is appropriate. That's fine. <laughs> it's average at best. I like it. <laughs> uh, uh, what's, okay. what's one that you got? Uh, well, I did the tutors, but I can jump on. This one's just easy. Simplify the decks. Simplify, simplify. Don't get complicated. Don't go, okay, this card goes into this, and then when this happens and this and this and that, just simplify the decks. Make them pretty yeah. straightforward. Uh, you don't need to make it bad. Just make it yeah. simple. You know, Don't have a ton of things needing to happen for this deck to win. You want it to be like, okay, and- this is a, a face beater deck, or this is a life gaining deck don't go this is a life gaining plus also the side theme of this and side theme of this and side theme of that you know you just want your cards to kind of synergize and go one direction so for like the complexity thing i was thinking like yes i agree with you 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 don't want to be too complex you don't want to be a combo deck but you also don't want to be too simple because if they're not doing anything they're not going to find they won't understand why you think this is fun. Yeah. Right. So in my mind, you, you wanted them to be able to consistently do one or two things per turn, be it like draw spell and then a whatever spell or a ramp spell into whatever spell Um, or making sure like you're doing, you're playing a spell and then attacking. And and those are things that I think you want to just build into your deck just to to mold them into knowing like do something because that's mm-hmm. what you want to be doing is like um and so that's that's where I would go just like make sure that they're not doing nothing where it's it's not too simple yeah either uh my next key is probably there's a lot of you may stuff in magic try to use as little as that as possible because you may like you may draw a card or you may do this a new player is just gonna you may completely forget and they're going to they're gonna forget because as advanced players or players have been playing for years and years and years 20 years whatever i tend to sometimes miss the you mays and and, uh, you made a good example on the uh, on snipped is if you need a reminder token it's probably uh, not a good thing to have. <laughs> good to play that. If card. you can't consistently remember the trigger, they will absolutely not remember to use that trigger. Yeah. So they will forget the card exists. There's uh quite a few draw stuff where it's you may do this. If it's a you must draw, if they forget, you know, as a good player, if I'm playing with a group and the guy's like, Oh, I forgot to draw on my turn, uh, that's all right. And I'll look at the card and I'm like, oh no, it actually says you have to draw. I was like, nope, draw yeah. that card. You know, even if it's a turn pass, they'll say draw that card because you don't have the, a choice. They, they had to have. Yeah. And so, yeah, I, I totally agree with that point. I, I think that's a little too specific. Like, e- even if it said May, I would just let them do it as a new player. I'm not um, saying you have to have it completely cut out. I'm just saying yeah. shy away from having too many of those have it have it be forced triggers and that's and one of the things that i was thinking was like almost triggers that aren't specifically like interacted with with that player uh and we'll get more into that with uh the blueprint talk but like activated abilities i think are almost more simple because you're actively activating them versus a trigger that naturally happens when something else happens that you got to remember Mm-hmm. And so I think there is a difference there um, between the activated abilities and tr- triggered abilities. And then even, you know, where the triggers are coming from, like, is it an enchantress deck when you're playing an enchantment, you get to draw cards and that's something that you are controlling. Or is it something like when another player does something, will it trigger something you have? You might never remember that because mm-hmm. you're having to pay attention to every player doing 
what are you doing? I don't even and know. You know, they don't know. A new the cards. player is not looking at besides creatures on the board. Yep. They're not looking at what other people's creatures are. They're focusing they, on this is what I'm doing. It is yep. right in front of me as my board. I am making creatures. I'm doing this. And then I'm whatever. Everything that anybody else is doing that only comes into their world when they're trying to attack or do something that way. They mm -hmm. don't know what creatures are necessarily out. The, they'll go, do you have any flyers? Do you have something that'll block this yeah. specific <laughs> card? <laughs> this one? This that I'm pointing at right here? Yeah. yeah. And the, I can't say this word. The Commander Smiths can barely say these words. Yeah. <laughs> Kid can't even read. That's just mainly me. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I'm right on that button. What? Hey, what? Kid can't even convenient. Read. It's almost like you planned it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that that's just yeah triggers and i think there's like different levels and that's something that you need to be cognizant of when you're putting cards in mm -hmm. uh all right what is <laughs> we're gonna have to get to our blueprint we're almost at an hour and we haven't even touched our blueprint <laughs> We're at 46 minutes. We're doing all right. Yeah. We're doing all right. This might be an hour and a half cast. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's all right. Oh, that's funny. I was like, is it really already 45 minutes into this? It's what did it's, we do? It's not even work when you're having this much fun. So yeah. uh all right, what's another key? Why don't you hit the the colors? Uh that one we was interesting. Or do we that one was yours? I didn't even take that into consideration. Okay. Well, I put one to three color decks. Uh, we had talked a little bit before, like one to two would probably yeah. be, be better, but a lot of these commanders that are probably good for newer players to use, they're good for every type of player, but they're good commanders that a new player would like are three colors. And so that's why I kind of edged it up to three. You typically want that yeah. one to two because it's easier for mana fixing and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, the good commanders typically are on that three color range for, and I, and I think that more colors adds more complexity and making sure that you have a good mana base. And we were talking about not using fetches versus three colors. And you know and what so it could it, be. And I'm just kind of thinking of this out loud as we're talking about it, it could mm -hmm. be a three color that's focused on two of the colors. Yeah. Yep. So that you just that have that splash of getting your third color to get your commander out, but your whole deck is mainly two colors. So mm -hmm. that could be kind of the the, the way to run that. Um, one and, one of the things that I was thinking and like thinking about like the portal decks because those were more those sets were for beginners mm -hmm. was they didn't even have instance in those. Uh, those decks they're all sorceries yeah, it makes and then sense they because that's how a new player plays is it's yeah. normally on their turn as soon as they can play it play it and then they they will have cards that can work at instant speed but they specify it on the card and so i would say that they're out for a brand new player stick to sorcery speed cards for them versus instant speed because they're probably going to be playing those instant speed cards at sorcery speed anyway. Yeah. And so I, I would try and at least focus on sorceries and add in a couple of instants just to be like, Oh, that's something different and then point it out, but not have them overloaded with right. so many choices. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, <clears throat> that's really true for brand new players because they aren't, there's just so many things that they're learning all at once. And then you're like, well, the sorceries, you only can play on your turn. But instance, don't get me started with interrupts. And I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> or mana sources. Uh, the only other thing on my list would be like anything that your play group doesn't play with or doesn't like, avoid that. Yeah. And, and I think that's probably just a given. Yeah. So. Uh, well, here's one thing I'll add really quick just to piggyback on that is if you don't play things that will make that person the target, don't put things yeah, in your deck really that point. are going to make you the target. If you're building a deck for somebody else, don't be like, all right, well, I'm going to put expropriate in here and <laughs> or I'm going to, well, just when you have those commanders that are like red flag commanders, the, uh, 
<laughs> Sorry. I'm kind of half picking at my robe. And when I went like this, it just like fluttered. Oh, it's like, what the hell happened? Like, you Sorry. Know, it's like, you lost, you're like, what? <laughs> my MK Ultra programming came in. Uh, um, so the, uh, I, I would avoid those red flag, super powerful commanders. Yeah. Cause they're going to be a target right away. That's Even what happens too with, with, yeah. with like sliver decks is people know that they're super powerful. And like I was saying two weeks ago or last week or whatever that was, sliver decks are good for newer players. And we had that discussion about, you know, they're, they're complex and all that stuff. But what ends up happening is that new player just gets targeted because, it, yeah, you know, they do end up playing a lot of new players do end up playing that but they get targeted right away because they're so powerful. That's a deck that it's you such probably, a high synergy yeah. deck that it's they're good. They're good yeah. cards. Imagine, imagine giving a new player here. Here's my Urza deck. Oh, this guy seems fun. Well, you're going to die very quick if you don't know how to run that because <laughs> everybody's going to want to kill you. Uh, all right. Should we get into the blueprint of this? So let's do it. Okay. So let's start off with ramp ramp. Okay. Um, so how I have this noted is more, I said more than one use. You kind of want to find some mono rocks or creatures that when they come in, they go search for a land and you can play that land or your mono rocks have a second use. Uh, I will say as like a newer player probably doesn't, they don't understand mono rocks and the importance of it, if they have the option of playing this elf that's a 2-2 two, two, or this elf that's a 1-1 one, one that gets me a land, they're going for that 2-2, two, two, you know, because it's bigger and it can do stuff and it can do more damage. Um, get rid of, make it so that your stuff isn't just basic. They don't understand that you're setting, your first few turns is a lot of setup to make it so you can play bigger cards and stuff later. Uh, and so that's why I kind of put in here more uses on your stuff, more of like a thought vessel adds, makes your hand, uh, you can have a, a limited, you know, hand size commander sphere. You can sacrifice it to draw a card. That one players aren't really necessarily going to see that as much. Uh, but then I also put in here low cost mono rocks because again, newer players aren't going to want to, waste their time on playing a mono rock they'd rather play a creature so if you had something that only caught like soul rings of course but i did we did have a little discussion beforehand about uh mono crypt because it's a zero drop yeah uh, mono rock mono yeah crypt, so i do that, think there's a difference between like something like soul ring which is a fantastic card for everybody and mana crypt which is you know when people are newer players don't want to pay life they don't want to lose life good point um and that coin flip adds extra complexity i forget those triggers you know because i'm a cheater but well, also, i was gonna say hey if a new player forgets about it then they don't take any damage right <laughs> <laughs> but i mean they don't want to play damage so they might not even play it or think it's a good card when the card is fantastic um and so something like that having having those cards in there are probably next level like mm. that when, when they've played a couple and they get the point of it and then you can go like, this card's really good. Make sure that you're, you know, like you can go through your card choices and be like, this card's incredibly good. It's a hundred dollar card. And they'll go, oh, what? And, and so being able to point out those differences, but they need that base knowledge of how the game works. And so I, I agree with you, like having the difference between like a land war elves or a birds of paradise and something like a talisman or a signet, those are good learning tools because yeah. you have to tap both of them, but it will be a reminder for them that creatures have summoning sickness and artifacts don't and lands don't. That's a good point. And so creating too. that difference and teaching them like creatures have to wait a turn. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's a good thing for them to learn base wise. And then you, again, maybe you want to avoid haste until that next time, if that makes sense. Until they're level up. Yeah. Uh, so what do you think about the uh, creatures 
being able to go find your land because then that's more of instead of casting a cultivate that just goes to go search for land that player is more likely going to play a creature oh and i get to go get a land cool i'll get the land mm-hmm. hey i haven't played a land this turn or my next turn now i'm playing my land i think a lot more of that than using your spells because they're not going to play the cultivate they will until they have yeah. all no creatures or that's their only choice they're not going to go search for that you know and I think I think that's a really good point too. Like spell wise, they won't like over a creature. I think a creature is probably just better to go like the the wood elves, those basic cards they would prefer, um, and will be more aggressive in playing with mm-hmm. them. I would I would bet that. Um, but I still think cultivate and far seek. I think those cards are fine. Like they're yeah. not too complex. They're not um, complex. I just don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, you get to that turn and they have three mana open and they're like, well, I could play this thing that goes to get me more mana. I already have three, but I can cast this yeah. two, three elf that does nothing and have a creature out. I'm going that route. Whereas yeah. all of us would go, fuck, I'm getting more land. <laughs> you know, like, well, and I, and that's that's even their perspective of how long the game is is they don't know you mm-hmm. know what i mean they don't know that three land isn't enough they don't know that five land isn't enough um you know they hardly even understand that their artifacts and their creatures can go away and more likely will go away um and so their perspective on what happens during a game is so so minuscule mm-hmm. that like having those reasons like going and getting lands is very good. And then artifacts and creatures are very good depending on where you're at. Um, and so, yeah, like those levels of, of simplicity, but still good. Mm-hmm. Right. Like soul ring is probably still the best ramp card for a new player or just everybody in general. Um, but getting into ones that I wouldn't play like ramp wise, like I wouldn't play extra planar lens. You know what yeah, I mean? They don't want to really get rid of a land. Yeah. They won't understand that or um, something like smothering tithe is so incredibly good, but they'll have to like watch the triggers and like reminder card. That's yep, exactly you need a reminder token. card. You're going to need that. And they won't, you know, like that first one they might catch if they're really smart people, but I'm not. So I miss it right <laughs> now. And, but if they're drawing more cards on a turn, they'll miss that. Mm-hmm. And and so like the card's really good and really powerful, but you have to pay attention. You have to and be again, really paying that attention. Player is only focused on them at that point. They're, yep. It's their play yep. mat. That's all they're work- worried about at that point. Yep. So like th- those are the kind of differences of like, you're going to be wanting them to be playing really good cards. But when it's something where they, they need to think, you know, two, two or three steps beyond themselves, they're not going to be able to comprehend it. Cause remember, this is the most complex game in the world. And just out, out of how many card choices there are, how many interactions there are, how many rules there are, um, it's just, it's incredibly complex game and you need to be able to build up on that yeah. for newer players. And so being able to figure out one of the things that I was going through on this and going like most of these simple ideas were like the beginning of commander. And so like when like you you're first got pre con stuff and all that, or just I like think when the pre-cons do a, yeah, I, I think the pre cons do a really good job of being simpler, more simple, but like, like when we first started building these decks is what you're kind of saying. Yeah. Yep. Like the decks that we build now, you know, 10 years later are just so much more complex mm-hmm. than what we did at the beginning so I think when I was building decks, you know, again, 10 years ago when they were first coming out, like your brothers would be able to play it after a couple times, you know, once they learn the cards mm-hmm. and everything, they'd, they'd pick it up. But now 
they'd rather just eat pizza and get grease on my cards. That's, <laughs> that's, that's what they would do. Hey, Justin. That's what they did. <laughs> Not um, bitter at all. <laughs> so let's, let's. Yeah, let's keep moving down because we're at an hour. Woo! <laughs> uh, hour and a half. We're oh, I have land on the next one. Land? Yeah, sure. Okay. So, well, land is pretty similar to ramp is what I kind of had. I said okay. straightforward or easy built uh, built on ability. So like Relic Warrior Tower, Gavany Township, uh, Rogue's Passage makes it so you guys are unblockable. One of your favorites, uh, Kessig. Uh, then we have run. Yeah. Recursion. I have duels on here and then the, the no fetches is what I put, but that was our other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't really put this one on my list because I think, you know, I think basics and duels are probably the most important part, just making sure that they're hitting the colors that they need yep. and the land drops and those extra abilities, I think are a little bit next level because most of the time, they're going to be using it for land. Anyway. That's what I was saying. If you like relic warrior tower, again, the maximum hand yeah. size, whatever, but More that's than, only if they're I mean, in a drawing deck. So that might not necessarily work and, out that way. And think about that. Like, are they going to be getting over their hand size? Like, are they going to know to like draw that many cards is yeah. good and you get to keep it. Are you even going to be putting in complex enough cards to fill up their hand beyond? Yeah, that's probably a good point. Uh, it might be so like I don't, you said, I don't know this if might be matters. a next level thing to add the other ones of making their stuff unblockable because are they really even gonna look and see, hey, this land makes it so my guy can get through. You might be right that it's more on yeah, focused on the not even necessarily just duels, it's just fixing the land so that you're finding a lot of the dual lands, not the OG yeah. duels, just all the different yeah. kinds that there are. Yeah, and even tap lands at that point, as long as there's enough tap lands within the group, it's going to be fine. Yeah. Well, but if you don't, you, the, you have the cycle lands, you have the yeah. battle bond lands, you have so many different dual lands, and they're not fetching them. So who cares? <laughs> you know, yeah. That's yep. the point of shocks and duels and all that is you can go fetch those bad boys up. So, yeah. Um, and then, and apply that idea that we said earlier about the fetches and, and mana crypt, like, they don't new players don't like paying life. And so shock lands, Shocks pain lands, be, yeah. they might not like that. And so, I mean, you can still have it in there for like that next level. Like they can put it into play tap, not wanting to take the two damage, but that next game, you're like, if you want to play the spell this turn, you could do this. Mm -hmm. And so like, it doesn't hurt them to play it tapped or not. It's just not optimal. Right. So, um, all right, uh, yeah. move on to draw. Uh, so draw. I said cards that make you draw instead of... Wait, cards that make you draw instead of conditional draw. Take out the you may. So I, like one example I used as a takeout is like Life Crafters Bestiality. That one has the... <laughs> every time I say it, I was wondering, I was like, I haven't said that, that card in a long time. And I'm like, I wonder if he's going to still shake his head at me in disappointment. Still, yeah, oh yeah. Of course, <laughs> that's the joys of YouTube. You guys can see uh, Larry disappointed. He's not mad. He's just yes. disappointed. Uh, so, Life Crafters, you may scry one at the beginning of your upkeep, and then if you play a creature, you may tap one, and then you can draw a card. So they're not going to do that. So I, I more was focused on like Howling Mine. It makes everybody draw, but it's draw. Yeah. Um, Great Henge is borderline, but it is a you cast a non-token -to creature. The part they feel like is complicated is they may think they have to pay that full cost of Great yeah. Henge. So I, th I think I there's like, so much on Great Henge. I think could that's be a probably little a little too it's, much. It's so good. Like it, everything it's, it's, on it, it's like, <laughs> well, I'm just saying like once they get, if they understand that it doesn't cost as much as it shows there and they mm -hmm. get it out, they're gaining two mana two life and drawing cards just well, off of let's let's simplify that thought a little bit and be like um guardian project or beast whisper mm. like those two cards i think are fantastic i have also vanquishers banner so if you're playing most yeah you're gonna yep. be doing a tribal type thing it's fully agree with creature, that. creatures bigger uh then i also put uh, this kind of goes back to land though but i had like 
war room type stuff, but then you're back on that land thing. So it's like, do you have that? And or don't you? Yeah. And it's paying the life. And so that's, they probably wouldn't like yeah. that. So maybe either. I'm scratching that off my list and I will. Delete well, I mean, like if you agree, like that's part <laughs> of it too. We're not telling you how to build the deck. We're just giving ideas and opinions and what we've noticed with new players. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you're your own person. Um, you can do new what you want and be wrong. That's fine. Pissed. If you make them draw, so many cards yeah. and they have to discard which is insane <laughs> it's so like it's fine crazy. it's like no you're making the best hand possible you pick your best seven cards and discard <laughs> those others yeah but i want that it's like i want those yeah ah! of course we all do want those but you shouldn't be mad about drawing uh, more cards yeah. so yeah um so what do you have or, for or drawing uh, uh like no goes on there or do we move on to the next one we no 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 we can okay so it like draws again those those cards that specifically just like i think i'm like if we're if we're contrasting i'd go like phyrexian arena is like an up keep trigger like but i think no. it's maybe a little next level it's not like a, a the divination life, the life part oh that's true that's a really good point um but i did so, i did note that one i just didn't and like you said, it's the life. People yeah. hate it. <laughs> they do. I have to they lose a life do. and draw a card. This is bullshit. I'm not doing that. Can I? <laughs> but yeah, so <laughs> something like, like think of what is it? Uh, is it uh, what's the demon? Blood gift demon. They'll make you draw. Like you know what? <laughs> You're gonna draw and lose a life. Ha ha ha! Got you, good fucker. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so something like pull from tomorrow, where it's like blue, blue X, draw X cards. That might still be too harmonize uh, harmonize might be a good one okay. like let's just say green for, from tomorrow you still have to discard yeah they might not like that either <laughs> stuck in good cards God are, damn like, new players it, stop it. harmonize just like it says draw three cards it's sorcery speed it's very simple straightforward still a solid card that's something that i would say works something again going like rhystic study amazing card but they got to remember those yeah, triggers remember that. yeah and they or they're being nice and they are remembering your triggers um something complicated like tireless tracker can like so i put a land and then i get a clue and then i got to pay two to sacrifice that hey, clue to draw a card that, though, do you think that they would do that you know they could so they wouldn't uh, that's that's oh my that's point. what your point is okay that's, yeah, yeah i was it's like too I, much for them okay good that's i was like i don't think they would do it i think they would yep. and i sometimes get caught in like casting my hand and having these like the shards from um you know caldine i had a lot of times some shards still sitting there because i was trying to use what i had in my hand mm-hmm. and that's uh, like i know what i'm doing with it not saying that a new player doesn't but no, a new player doesn't know. That's I think that's <laughs> but they're, the point. they're trying to just play what's in their hand. They don't realize yeah. that more cards helps with being able to play more stuff. And so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I, that, I also wanted to kind of talk to you about that is, do you think a new player would play that spell unless it's the last spell in their hand to draw more cards? Or would they rather go, I mean, I could play this for five and draw three cards and maybe play something else or i could play this one creature and have it in play you know like in it doesn't help them at all it's just a creature out in play so that's yeah, why i, I almost was kind of know. combining things of like trying to get like creatures that do it or passive draw stuff you know what i'm saying I think I think that's a, a really good point. Like the ETB draws, like something that's physically going like I'm casting this or I'm doing this and this trigger happens or that spell resolves and that happens. So and that's why I'm like Tylus Tracker is just like fucking loops. <laughs> they won't do it. That's not yeah. going to, but but in a like mono green, like in my in my all creatures deck, that's a draw spell that, you know, it's a heavy draw card in there, or it's a good, um, in a landfall deck, it's, it's a good draw spell. I mean, I'm biased on that, but so like sensei's top is amazing for us. It will take fucking forever. I I said no for a new player (laughs) to understand what even top does much less look at the top three cards and learn what those cards are doing. 
and then not having you go like how what am i doing yeah you know what i mean right. they're yeah, you I, I did Sensei's not top put... is not something you should oh. be having new players have. Another card like that's super confusing would be like Necropotence. It's amazing, but they won't know what the fuck they're doing, and it's mm. paying life, and it's it's a very different, unique card that they'll. It there isn't really any other card like it, and so it's not something that they need to learn right away. Yeah, and another one that's really used a ton that is really confusing is like Sylvan library. Yeah. Do not use that one. That it's so I'm drawing the top three cards. They'll fucking put it into their hand and then <laughs> mix then like, it with their hand two, yeah. and then go, I don't even you know which two, one. I don't want to pay for life. I got to <laughs> oh. put two back. It's like, did you put the two back that you drew? <laughs> no, I just put back two that I wanted. I drew those three, right? No, you, you didn't. Can you imagine? <laughs> because you didn't pay the four. Like, can you imagine a uh, scroll rack with this? Yeah. Don't fucking <laughs> don't do that. So I you know tap I mean? two. Is it two or one? Is it, it's one. Tap one and I do what? I put them in yeah. exile and then I draw that many and then I put those. No, you don't draw those. It, you put that many cards into your hand. But oh yeah. And then he it's not that, even draw. And then you put those on top and have what I can choose the order. All right. 20 minutes later. <laughs> yeah. Don't fucking do that. So the it's probably just... turn is coming up right now. <laughs> <laughs> Burn. Um, and so like, if it's complicated, if you feel like you've seen other people go, like if, if you're playing in a game and you're like, well, this is taking entirely too long. Don't put that into your deck for a new player because it will take a really long time for them to understand. And it, it's it's definitely like there are so many levels to this game of complexity that keeping it simple is really important. Simplify, simplify. Yep. I think that's probably the key word for this whole thing is simplify. Yep. Don't make uh, it bad, just simplify. Yeah. All right, move on to removal. This one's a little more interesting with stuff. There's a lot of like don't do stuff, but... Um, more on this, you're more on mass removal is what this is. You don't want to do spot removal because spot removal or counter spells, I know I, I hate counter spells, but this honestly, the a new player is not going to know what the right targets are. They're not going to know what the actual threat is. So spot removal is not going to work necessarily as well because they're going to, uh, I don't know, I don't like that because it's a really big creature when actually the combo is right there. All they have to do is destroy that, but they don't know, they can't, they can't assess the actual threat to the board. Same with mm -hmm. counter spells. They're just going to be like, well, I counter that because it's a big creature. It doesn't do anything. It's, it sucks. But they're just countering because it's they're focused on damage of how big things are and all that. So yeah. more stick on the mass removal side of this. So like Wrath of God, Damnation. Uh, I actually put Grave Pact on here that's different because I was like... Mm. They're not having to do anything. It's if their stuff dies, everybody else's dies, you know, and it's not. Yeah. They're not making the decisions right. on what's dying. So I threw yeah. that kind of card on here. And then uh, what we had a kind of an interesting discussion on Unsnipped. Uh, you guys can check that out on YouTube if you've got a patron. Uh, so that <laughs> is Cyclonic Rift. Um, yeah. Most new players won't know when to use it. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because you use it on your turn you're still bouncing everything to everybody's hand even if you go yeah. even if you do it completely incorrectly and you wait until your second main phase and you go cyclonic rift all right no one has creatures anymore go ahead i can't do anything because they already passed my attack phase like even that's bad but it's still everybody's it's still, still starting from good. scratch <laughs> yeah yep. so uh but yeah so you want to more focus on hitting everything and mm -hmm. so they don't have to make that decision. Now, one thing that we talked yeah. about on snipped as well that you mentioned is what happens with wraths. What do new players typically not like to do? Yeah. I mean, a lot of times, so something like wrath of God or like Bane of progress where those cards are just destroying everything. They mark, they're like, but I don't want to lose my signet. And you're like, yeah, but he's fucking gaining 
10 life a turn. He's about to win the He's game. He's going to win. Just But just my Llanowar elves are awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and so it's always like I don't like if they have that attachment. Like I don't want to lose this. And that's a that's still that threat assessment thing, but I think it's it makes it less complex than you have, you know, a swords to plowshare that has to target the best creature on the board. And they have no idea, no idea what the best, and that and that might not be a bad thing either. But I would limit it in your deck i wouldn't you know i'd i'd lean heavier into the wraths like you're saying but like i would probably make that like in your next level like maybe not beginner new player stuff but your next level up okay now let's start adding a couple more of these things or, or here's one thing what do you think of this uh you like using this card it's pretty sweet the um the enchantment that comes out and then you get to take an enchantment or artifact from each remove an enchantment or artifact from each uh, player and it stays under until that leaves play. What is that one called? Again? Oh yeah. It's a white card. On it. I know what it is. Yeah. White, white colorless. It's an enchantment. Um, is it like fate of gate of something? Uh, but anyways, but that, yeah. that could be something there. There are multiple cards that do kind of things like there's that do similar things to that, yeah. but that's also, it's hitting each player. So they at least can be like, okay, what do you think the worst thing is for that player? Everybody goes, that, remove that. What's the worst thing from that yeah. player? Okay, remove that. Okay, what's the worst player? You know, you get help from the board. And you could you could do that with the spot removal too, with like Swords of Plowshare or, you know, you can be like, that, that player's like, what should I be getting rid of? Right. So that that could be something, but it does that, it's that instant speed it's decision making. It's it's still adding in a lot of like actual complexity if you're a brand one, new player. One other thing is they also don't want to piss off one person. Yes. And that's why if you're spreading it around, it's not pissing off, it's hitting everybody. You know, you're, Absolutely. you're pissing off everybody. No, but you yeah. know, th- that that is a thing with new players, and you can get it with when you play with certain people or maybe people you're not even comfortable with. They may not attack because yeah. they don't want you to get mad or, or don't know how you're going to react. And so a new player especially is like, well, I don't want this person's teaching me. I don't want to attack. I don't want to destroy that, you know? So mm-hmm. just <laughs> removing that that out of the equation, just being like, well, you cast it. It fucks everybody. You're okay. Don't worry about it. Yep. We're not mad at you. Yeah. Um, uh, Is there any other stuff on removal we wanted to was that the no goes? That was, that was good. That's okay. good. All right. Protection. Protection's interesting. So how I attacked this one was more of cards that are in play that aren't again the, the having to make the choice. Uh we we talked a little bit beforehand and unsnipped about it, but like Teferi's protection. I don't think a new player is necessarily gonna know when to use that. They're gonna be yeah. like I say go to Fury's protection. <laughs> you guys can't touch me until next turn. It's like, all right, well, that didn't do anything like that. Yeah, I mean, time, timing is so important with yeah. to Fury's protection. So I, I agree with that's more of like a counter spell card yeah. almost. Um, but like you were saying with like privilege position, asceticism, uh, Shalai, and that was all in unsnipped when we're if you want to go check that out, check that out. <laughs> We'd like to get into the double digits <laughs> here. <laughs> We'd like to get more than two, two, two. people to listen to that one. <laughs> what do you, what do you think about like cards, like lightning greaves and boots? Oh, I didn't put it on there because it is being specific. And that's why I went with the mass protecting their stuff that it's all protected. Cause they're not going to know, like, yeah. first of all, you put on lightning greaves and then they're not going to understand that they can't put stuff on it. You know, yeah. like, I can't Shroud, even target my own stuff. Shroud makes that complexity. I agree. The haste part when they're just learning that creatures can't do something, then introducing like with this card, they can might be good, but it might be a little too much as well. So, yeah, I think those are questionable, you know, undoubtedly good, Mm -hmm. but 
probably boots more than greaves is fine yeah yeah because yeah but I, I, I kind of that's why way. i was focused more on the hitting everything of yours uh yeah. one thing i did throw in here was player protection which like ghostly prison propaganda sphere of safety so stuff like that that makes it so they play it and it's just more difficult to hit them it saves yeah. them as a player from being attacked and all that makes it more they, difficult yeah and that, i think that takes some of the pressure off of them as well to where it's like oh this isn't just like a really aggressive game and it might throw it off a little bit but like just having them not have to worry about being attacked at every turn is probably like just a simplifying thing for them mm -hmm. and the funny thing is i can see this being played and then you know the table going oh fuck now i can't and like them not realizing how good that those cards yeah. are you yeah. know By that, adding... that can definitely happen yeah yeah uh one what thing i put in here i don't know if i talked about it beforehand with you but what do you think about like maze of Ith? I think I think that would be similar to spot removal. Because what my thought was with Maze of Ith is just having that out and the other players knowing that it's out there. If they know what Maze of Ith actually does, it kind of protects them from being attacked, almost like a propaganda type thing. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. well, if I attack with this creature, you're just gonna not make it anything you know you're not yeah. I can't hit you with it but then again they're gonna it's playing a land that isn't giving them mana so that kind of yeah. sucks so they're just like well this doesn't help me it's not a land i need mana it's a, it's a complex card yeah so okay. so it, it's the next level we'll talk yeah. about that in another week no i'm just kidding maybe <laughs> should we do it should uh, we some of the some we of the cards, like what what like would you think levels? About? So like no. we, we, <laughs> core cards for commander. This is the levels of becoming a commander smith. <laughs> the ultimate oh commander smith. We're not even at that level. We're no, at like level the two. ultimate. Yeah. Two. <laughs> How many? There we're talking like 10, 12 levels. Yeah, we're and, at level two. <laughs> hmm. Sweet. The uh what do you think about like something uh like Eldrazi Monument? So giving all your stuff indestructible, but having to, having sacrifice, to sacrifice a creature. Yeah, uh, it's that like I don't want to sacrifice. Yeah. And sometimes if you don't, if you're not playing enough creatures, like that can be problematic too. And so I can see that like missing the triggers. But I like and the or, indestructible stuff. There's uh, yeah, um, and the flying and the plus one plus one. So the like a monument. That one would be a. That's a lot. It is. But yeah, it's it's very static and not worrisome. Protections tend to be pretty complex even for seasoned people that if they weren't around for protection, they don't really understand what it was, even if they've been playing for a while. So there's a condom joke in there, but I don't know where to use it. Hmm, maybe. <sighs> That's why I have kids. Um, all right. So no, they were planned. <laughs> uh let's move into graveyard oh, and recursion yeah. right or do you have more do you have more on that uh two two that i would avoid yeah. just it, for protection would be condoms so like uh veilstone amulet isn't played a whole ton but it's like protection like surprise protection and so it's i don't even like, know what that one is what is that one that's the artifact from feather and calamax like whenever you cast a spell all your creatures gain hexproof oh yeah 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 the, the one that you've found that yeah that yeah up. Yep, so yep, 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 i yep. really like it that but that's really not good. something i would yeah. hand over to a new player Ooh. or something like spell skite where yeah that's a little comp that's even complicated for you lowry and us <laughs> <laughs> played it wrong for years yep <laughs> yep and and so but paying two life they they'll probably like try and leave up blue mana instead if they you know instead of playing yeah. spells so like that kind of thing where they're needing to make decisions rather than what you I were mean, saying. It's, of still, just like, it's, it's a confusing card as a, a seasoned player, you know, yeah, like which yeah. spells can I, I can actually steal auras? Yeah. <laughs> You're going to, what, what can, what can I divert over to this artifact creature? Yeah. Can I, can I thought seize my, that's a couple, sky? that's a couple levels up, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, all right. Uh, next we get into graveyard and recursion. Uh, I yeah, it, it, it's a similar thing. I, I did a lot. Of, you can see my similar thing or theme. 
built in on land or creatures is what I put. So I put like Hall of Heliod. But again, that's making it more difficult where we were talking about the lands. You don't really want to do that. Uh, but I did all the lands that recur. But the recursion, you kind of want to stay away from because it just, their graveyard, it goes into the graveyard. They're not looking at it. I mean, even, even, they won't. Even as a player that's been playing for however long, I have to remind myself, hey, I have graveyard recursion stuff. Yeah, uh, you have those tricks of like turning cards sideways or separating yeah. them or, and some people might not even know what they are right so you know? especially with what we had talked about with the land stuff this is probably one area you want to stay away from uh and and to be honest with you recursion didn't come into my repertoire of playing uh until recently because a lowry more Just putting always the point talking out about it <laughs> recursion so it's not like as in the last six months, but in the last couple of years, I've been putting more and more recursion in than I had before. And so that's, yeah, that's not necessarily a thing that you learn right away or you realize, you know? Yeah. So, and so something simple like eternal witness, like that, like you're saying creature comes into play, you can look through every card and maybe, you know, and bring whatever one back you want. That's still pretty advanced for understanding what cards you would need at that moment. So more it likely little, it is a little more simple because it's just like, all right, I play a creature and I get something back. Yeah. Yeah. But and they're but not going to understand. <laughs> but they're going to go, what card should I get? Well, I was going to say nine times out of 10, uh, they're playing that when there's no creatures or anything in their graveyard. And they're not, they're just like, I just want a creature in play. They're not realizing <laughs> this is more of a spell to get yeah. your stuff back. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, and then like flashback cards, like they'll fucking miss that all day. Ugh. <laughs> they'll bad. they won't remember you know so i wouldn't do it i would uh, avoid those for sure all right so last well kind of last couple here but uh game enders day of dragons what kind of stuff do we want to do here i just put basically maybe have some alt win cards have some cards that um am i losing you oh there we go you're back uh have some things that That's simplify what was that are you there? Can you hear me? No, you can't hear me. I think we're slowing down. Yeah. Oh, you're getting back. I can see your I video can hear now. You, but you were breaking up for me as well. Okay. <laughs> we're coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is fun. <laughs> am I am I back to fluid? Yep, you're good. I can tell like all of a sudden when I see your face just sit there for the okay. same position for like five seconds, I'm like, he's not he's not there anymore. <laughs> You could trick I'm me sorry. at some point. Just go like this. Go. <laughs> Just hold. Yeah. <laughs> That's perfect. You looked legit froze there. That was good. Uh, so. <laughs> uh, that's for the YouTubers right there. All right. So the end game enders or the day of dragon. So I put on here basically like alt win cards could be kind of fun because it adds like a a little twist or a goal, you know, like you play other board games. They have this goal, um, a side goal. Yeah. A, a side goal to it. And like, maybe what is the one that I'm trying to think of that when you have 20 creatures or more, it's the green one that does it and you win the game or survival of the fittest. Nope. The that's an one? enchantment. That's no, nope. Oh no, nope. that's the nope. uh, sacrifice nope. to get a creature. It's like discard a creature card yeah. and go <laughs> find a creature. Yeah. Very different. Uh, but anyways, so if you have cards that have alt wins on them that, that fits in with what that deck is doing, that works. Maybe you're playing a really heavy creature deck, putting that green one in where if you have yeah. more than 20 creatures, you win the game. You have uh, the white one with life, and so yeah. you put that into a life gain deck. And I wouldn't, I've play, noticed that I wouldn't new... play Mortal Kombat because that one would be no, probably way too not. tough. Uh, probably not. But like other cards, like oh, the other part of it is, I would say like maybe overrun type cards that that a lot of times you're going to have a creature heavy decks because that's what new players are going to want is creatures out, mm -hmm. the big meat force mm -hmm. out. Having things that will just overrun the board. You play overrun the the card or crater hoof or. Do you think do you think crater hoof is a little too complex with like a ton of math? 
but, but like once to me, overruns pretty it's, easy because it's just like three, 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 three on top of this I versus don't think Crater so, Hoof. Because you play it and the players aren't going to be like, you figure it out. You know, it's like <laughs> they play it and they're like, all right, I have how many out? Okay. They all get this. You know, everybody's going to help yeah. figure out the math of what each. I sometimes, a lot of times, have to figure out the math of what everything True. is. You know, like yeah. it, it's it's a game winner. Card. So it's gonna it's going to include everybody in there. Yeah, because they're all going to try to figure out. Normally, what happens with Crater Hoof is it gets played, and then everybody's like, "All right, let me see. Yep, you can kill me. You can kill this person, and yep, that should be game right there." You know, everybody can. Yeah. Unless there's a trick up the sleeve. Uh, and one of the things that I would avoid would be something like, which is also an overrun effect, but Triumph of the Hordes. I was literally going to ask you that. I was like, what do you think about Triumph? Yep. Yeah. So I would, I would not add that in because you're people, adding another like, damage type thing into the yeah. equation. Yep. Yeah. And so you like having 10 poison. Okay. So poison, but you just have that one card that you'll hardly ever see it's not going to be poison isn't consistent enough maybe okay in a poison deck but yeah you're right because they're, they're not going to realize i need to hit this person for 10 poison because yeah. this isn't going to happen again <laughs> you know it's like i'm not going to get through like they may even it out and try to be like all right i'm attacking everybody you're and taking so you, seven, you have to you're explain taking that yeah. and you might and like again these cards are kind of timing important. And so they are last game, but it's just kind of like you need a critical mass. And if you like Crater Hoof is always good. Overrun is always good on a simplistic level. Triumph of the Hordes, again, it's it's different than combat damage. So it's not going to add into the game. It's just like this side quest of this one turn casting this one card and if you don't knock a player or two out, then it was a pointless card. Completely waste. Yeah. You don't, you don't add to the damage. You don't. Yeah. So that that's where I would. And, and again, you're adding in a different rule that they don't need to know right away. Yep. I agree with that. Uh, all right. Uh, let's get into the themes or commanders yeah. uh, that you can kind of look at here. Uh one thing I think is really nice that I have done with the one deck that I made is like life gain. So like an Aloro mm -hmm. deck. Uh, so you basically are, <laughs> they're just gaining life all the time. And it's kind of nice because you cannot do anything for 10 turns and all of a sudden they're up 20 life and no yep. one did anything. Uh, I also have like meat force kind of decks where like Edgar, uh, where you're just generating tokens. Um, what else did I put for meat force? Oh, I said, He's a general ladder creature. Blah, blah, blah. This isn't a commander, but assemble the legion. I really want to get that card in more decks. I think it's such a good card. You're the only one that I've seen play it because I can never play it because I play red and only red and not <laughs> with white. Uh, but like bitter blossom. Do you think bitter blossom? No, that might be too tough because it's the life thing that we were talking they, about. Well, they might not like it, and so yeah. they might not play it right away or like appropriately. Yeah, and then Alayla was another example of a meat force. Yeah. Uh, and then I put also like tribal decks. Uh, there's a lot. Yeah, of, for tribal sure. is like the thing you almost want to do for newer players. You I, I think so too. Tribe I think. needs to be elves. Needs to be vampires. I, I was thinking elves would almost be perfect. Yeah. Like tribal elves, mono green. You're going to have enough like land mana. You know, you're going to have enough creatures to be aggressive. You, you need to make sure that you have enough like draw in the mono green deck. Mm -hmm. But then after that, it just kind of has it just, a really go good sweet of spot of everything yeah. you need for a new player. Uh, what are some other themes and commanders? I just have a list of commanders. So why don't you run through some of the themes oh. and commanders and then I can list some of the other commanders that might be good for a new player to use. Yeah. So good for a new player to use um, like a defensive deck, something like, Doran or Arcades, where um, they can be a, a bit aggressive but still be able to block. And it's pretty straightforward. Um, I mean, like, yeah, it, it, you're playing creatures and then they have a defense and they can do a lot of damage. So it's, it's yeah. good there. Um, I think Voltron decks are pretty simple and straightforward. Um, it, it does add that like commander damage piece which can be a little complex, but just being able to focus on one creature, protecting it, 
and making it big enough, I think is simple enough that that's something that a, a new player would want to be doing. Um, I was kind of thinking like my Naeth fight deck is a nice mid range deck where you're always doing one or two things. You're drawing some cards, you're in green. So you're going to be ramping enough. The fight mechanic might be a little say, confusing. That's a little tougher. So you're having but to choose also, yeah, right but there. the thing there is to with fight, you're doing it consistently enough that, you know, like you, you can, you're, you're fighting probably, you know, once per turn not necessarily worrying about what the best threat is. You're worrying about what creature do I have that can kill another creature. Mm -hmm. And then you want like that best thing. So, but again, it's drawing you the cards. You're being able to be aggressive enough. Um, So again, like it's, that's probably the one deck where I'll be like, I think maybe not a new, new player. It might be a next level one, but that's, that's one of my more simpler decks. And so I think, I think a mid rangey it hits that part of like doing one thing, having creatures strong enough to be able to attack has enough removal, but again, it, it's not really wrathy. Um, so it might not be good enough in that area, but I do think you probably want to be in green, you know, some way. Cause it's the best color. <laughs> It is. It's a really good draw color, and it's definitely the best ramp color. Has the best cards. <laughs> has some of the best creatures. Like it's it's a really good color to be in. So that's kind of how I see it a little bit. Sorry, that, blue players. <laughs> <laughs> and so that 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 was the we we had already hit a lot of the other ones that I went over or had on my notes. Well, some of them like we had talked about a little bit was. And we don't want to get too in depth. We already have fucking one hour and forty minutes. But Chew Lane, we had talked about a little bit uh, on the precast stuff. On, I think that's a little Snip. like I think that has the the red flag commander on it. Mm. So the part that I liked about Chew Lane was that you're casting a creature, you're drawing a card. Casting a creature, drawing a card. The part that gets a little more complicated is the playing the land, but then also realizing that hey, I, I can bring this one drop creature back to my hand cast it and draw another card and so that might get a little more complicated i was i guess when i first wrote it down was more focused on casting and drawing but i think you're right that with its other stuff it may be a little more difficult than a what a new player fuck you camera what are you doing (laughs) i mean we're an hour and 40 minutes in (sighs) but yeah (laughs) shulane uh oh upside down thank you thank you camera now it's like more towards my junk yeah baby check that out on the youtubes <laughs> i'm uh, i'm thinking you'll cut this uh yeah maybe uh all right so i, I agree after we had the if you want to check that out on snipped uh, just we're we're pumping on snip trying to get <laughs> At least three listeners this <laughs> yeah. next week. That's what I'm hoping for. Uh, but yeah, we talked about it on there. Uh, I put, so the, the last couple was like Gishath was more of like a dinosaur. So that fits in with the tribal stuff. It's yeah. And I think that's mid rangey and aggressive enough. Yeah. I, I think that's fine. Other than like maybe the mana constriction. Yeah. Uh, Krenko is like a oh, perfect, <laughs> like agreed. You are just playing goblins and you're, doing damage you might have it's a little more complicated on like when to tap things and all that but really all you got to do is just play goblins it's kind of like the elf side of it Mm -hmm. you know it's the red for elf uh you had arcades kalia might be a little more complicated because that one's uh yeah it has that attack trigger yeah so you gotta be a little more aggressive It's, it's still pretty simple it's like just try and protect it and yeah put out big creatures but yeah that might be next level yeah animar i thought would be perfect in this because it has protection natural protection on him you're playing creatures you're getting counters on it the part that gets a little complicated is they got to realize in their hand now this costs less so you may have a lot of times that they go 
pay the full casting cost or they don't even cast the creature because they don't realize, oh, this costs five less than what it did before. So maybe. Yeah, I, I think that that's a next level one at least. Uh, and then I had, I, I'm going to skip Maurice because that one just seems the goading part is fun, but I think that's actually more next level. But Joria yeah. Weatherlight. And Tatiova, I think, are perfect for a newer type player because Joria, you're just casting artifacts or uh, just historic spells, drawing cards. And Tatiova, you're playing land and was it play land? Draw, Draw a card, gain a life. life. Yep. And so that mother effort. <laughs> At least it came back. Ah! Yeah. Uh! yeah and actually with tatiova where you're (laughs) making faces it's so pissed Uh, about it it's like it's all right yeah go ahead when when i was going through my cards i i in my opinion tatiova might be the best one to use with or for them it's the incentivizes to lay lands you're drawing a card, so you're drawing enough cards. Gaining life. The, gaining life. That that one might be a little bit like too many things going on, but it doesn't matter if they miss it or not, really. And the only thing I would caution against is making a landfall deck for right. it. Just make it natural. Just a deck yeah. that has. Because if it's like, on. okay, I laid a land, that it's trigger, 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 trigger. If they're having to remember what every one of those cards does does on those triggers that is where it can be complex and remembering but if it's just like draw a card boom it's moving them forward and then you just have unrelated non-landfall cards and you just kind of like good solid green blue cards you're going to be drawing enough cards you're going to have enough land in your hand um i just feel like and and it's defensive enough where you're just gaining enough just gaining enough life that it isn't problematic but it's also kind of like making them not die as quick. Yeah. And so that's, I, I was thinking Tatiova was, would be a really good, simple, but still complex. Oh commander. shit. That, that's your number one, isn't it? Yeah. I didn't do it. Uh, <clears throat> that's fine. We can stall. Uh, no, uh, I, you know what my number one is actually, and is one that I built is uh, Edgar. <laughs> I'll do Edgar. The only reason because you're just you're playing vampires and you're getting yeah. vampires. It's pretty easy and it either be Edgar or Laurel. Like those are the two. You I built them. Yeah. Yeah. Those are um, the two that I built off of it. Uh and because like going with like Edgar can be complex. Like, but there's a difference between landfall triggers and they're all different triggers. And when those vampires attack, it's going to be trigger, 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 but they're all the same trigger of putting a one, one counter on it. Right? If you have Edgar out, you know, more if, of, but you still have that. And, and, and as you can see with the two that I like, they're like, have the eminence thing where it's, yeah, they don't even have to cast the commander. It's just, they're getting that ability as it's in their command mm-hmm. zone, which is always nice as a new player, but they will need to expand because they got to realize that, most commanders don't have that. <laughs> yeah. Most commanders yeah. don't have this eminence thing. And in fact, uh, Oloro doesn't even have it on it. That was before they even invented <laughs> before that. Before eminence. So. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll go through my no-goes real quick. So like avoid combo. I'm not even going to talk about that. Uh, I don't avoid stacks like an Urza deck. Um, avoid your tutors. So like a Magda deck is going to be too too much for them to know. Um, my Omnath landfall deck. That's too many. God damn it. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Like, yeah, it's just, it does not like what's going we on. We just almost need to get done. So I can <laughs> figure out what the fuck is going on. Uh, ah. My, my Omnath landfall deck is going to be too many triggers. Calamax is a spell slinger and that's kind of like turn oriented. And like, that's, that's, kind of like uh, a little too complex i'd say your Same feather thing with deck your... would be way too complex yeah yeah for sure not yeah con uh, don't want that madrotha graveyard i want to avoid that at all costs for new players 
like morph deck, no way for Kadena or Animar. Um, I wouldn't do stealing because that's one of those like you're gonna piss people I, off and they don't want them after. mad at me. Yep. So they're <laughs> just not gonna play their deck. That's that's what Jeremy used to do with his uh, Olivia deck. I give up. I give up. This is ridiculous. I don't even know what's going on anymore with it. <laughs> so I'm not going to grab it, and it just keeps doing that. But now if I go to get my phone, now I'll come back. Once I turn it, maybe not. Uh-oh. Am I gone for good? It's not coming back. Boy. <sighs> All right, let's just move on then. I'm here. All right. Let's <laughs> so hopefully those are all decent examples of what we think would be good for a new player. Um, yeah. Building or playing against them. Just, I think you nailed it pretty simple. Simple, simple, simple. Simplify. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good list of everything. And it doesn't mean that like, this this is for everybody in building decks for other people as well. I don't know. We we don't have very many new people that come in, but we do have some occasionally. So that's why I always have it on hand. That's kind of fun. I I haven't played my Laurel deck in a while, but it kind of makes me want to play it again just to see how it runs. <laughs> it's been a while since we've seen it go. So yeah, yeah it'd be interesting. All right, let's uh, move on before my camera flips for the umpteenth time. Uh, that one. one spec to rule them all. All right, so we're going to make this quick because my camera's doing shitty shit. So shitty uh, shit. one spec. We are picking one card from Caldime, and it is a card we think will go up. And Larry, why don't you tell us your one spec for this week? I'm going to go Torolf, God of Fury. That's the red one. Um, just a normal foil. I'm I'm guessing. You know, they're they're doing more of it, but the pre-release foils at ten dollars. The showcase foils at ten dollars. Um, I I think the normal foils will be more than a non-foil showcase. And and so. I, I'm I'm just saying I think the card is really good, really close to repercussions, which is like a twenty dollar card, but low supply, and um, and so it also think, does something pretty unique too, and yeah. it's a mythic card. Um, so I I see the foil like the foils on TCG were three sixty, and I see that being like a ten dollar card. Yeah, and take the pre releases are already over ten. Yeah, yeah. so. Yeah. So in comparison, I see the pre-releases getting higher, but I don't want my buy-in to be ten bucks. Yeah. I'd rather take the non-foils at three, you know, three four bucks. So yeah, oh, I dig that. We'd be more in depth with stuff, but my camera's probably going to flip at any point, so we're just kind of moving through this quick. We're going to be at two hours here pretty soon too. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Uh, okay, so my one spec is Toski, uh, Bearer of Secrets, and I am focused on the showcase of that um that i do foils on that no it's just showcase showcases are at about seven bucks and it's already in 1000 edh rec decks it's one of the more used cards from this set uh it's a great in any creature deck it doesn't even have to be squirrels because it's just whenever a creature deals damage yeah. to a player it's not one or more it's whenever a creature deals combat damage draw a card uh, he's indestructible. He has to attack every time. Can't be countered, so that's always fun. Uh, with the showcase ones, you have the different art, and they're all sitting about five bucks. So even the non-showcase are at five bucks. Uh, I could see this card getting probably to fifteen plus uh, with no yeah. reprints. Toski is fantastic. Fantastic. It fits for your squirrel commander. If you want to have a squirrel commander, this is it's perfect for that. Because think of it like. You're making tons of squirrels, squirrel tokens, and all that. They all swing in. You draw cards for all those squirrels. So it's any any mono green go wide deck. This is probably a perfect. You know, just drawing that many cards in an elf deck seems crazy, right? Yeah. Well, doesn't it fit into those decks too? Like yeah. multicolor. Oh, it fits in, but it can just creature. be the lead of mono green, right? Right. Yeah. It's 
What are you playing? Uh, it's an elf deck that has Toski as it's uh, a squirrel as it's as its commander. You know, that makes sense. Hey. <laughs> makes sense to me. Uh, all right. Well, that should do it for this week, right? We're pretty much done there because we we're almost at two Good. hours when we were going to make this Hope one you shorter. Enjoyed. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Well, that should do it for this week. We will catch you guys next week. See ya. Oh, what's the, what's, where's the thanks for listening? Thanks for listening. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Sega. Are all the sets of boobies. Oh shit. Not that one. That one. Boobs. I'm talking oh, I mean, tatas. I hit the wrong one. Love Same. boobs. I'm bunkers for honkers. I love boobs. Thanks, Thanks for, for the memories. memories. I love boobs. Woo. How many times did my camera flip? That was insane. That was dumb. <laughs>